from a one-shop operation to the largest construction equipment dealer in Ontario. Garamond Construction Rentals has achieved excellence. Now, today, we are here to provide you with a recommendation that allows you to continue to do this into the foreseeable future and within the current market conditions. My name is Mtabisi, and these are my colleagues, Larissa and Jordan, and we are from Alpha Consulting. So, now just to get straight into it, Gaumon Consulting is looking for potential expansion opportunities, which you have outlined to us. And now, some of the issues that this really entails and that we'll be discussing with you today is the current market environment. So within the current conditions of oil price declines, so we'll be discussing issues around this. And then secondly, around financial sustainability. So are the alternatives currently available, financially sustainable for your organization as a whole? And lastly, the relationship with Komatsu. So we do recognize that this relationship is really important as you are their top, uh, as they are your top supplier. And you have formed a good relationship with them over the past years, which has helped greatly with the growth of your organization. And lastly, what we will recommend to you today is that you go forward with the purchase of Caledon in order to increase market share and also long-term assessing potential expansion opportunities. And what this really allows you to do as an organization is it allows you to achieve greater market share within Alberta and ultimately there's an improved return on equity associated with this. And lastly, it allows you to achieve excellence. Thank you, Tom. So, Tom had briefly mentioned the issues. I'm going to talk about them a little bit more. First and foremost is the market environment. Oil has taken a large plunge, and as a result, construction has slowed down significantly. However, the good news is that this is a very cyclical market, and Alberta will rise with the oil price in the near future. Secondly, the cur I want, we're going to take a look at the current effects and how the oil price drop has affected the industry as of now. Secondly, financial sustainability is always a critical issue in any valuation of a or investment decision. So we're going to look at the return on equity as well as the availability of funds in order to per in order to finance this expansion. And lastly, the Komatsu relationship. Looking at what Komatsu wants, what Garamount, Garamount wants, and how to fulfill both while fulfilling their needs. So, without further ado, let's get into a little bit of the current situation. Firstly, Garamount has achieved massive success, primarily in Ontario with 30 locations. And the five, purchase, the five purchase locations in Alberta. However, due to unfortunate circumstances, three of those five locations did not succeed, and we're left with two. There's a lot of opportunity in Alberta with the massive expansion that is available, which, which comes with the oil, oil price and oil development. Next, let's look at the business lines. Purchase the sale of new equipment, the rental of construction equipment, and the sale of new of used equipment. Rental equipment is a huge market because a lot of construction companies do not want to make the initial investment into the equipment. So this is where you have done exceedingly well and grown significantly. And that's great. That's something you should be proud of. Next, let's look into your a little into your goals, expanding westward. You've achieved massive success in Ontario, and now you want to carry that for the West. Alberta is a great option, however, we're going to mention a little bit later about potentially looking into BC. Due to their diverse economy and your large presence, there is opportunity for growth there. And lastly, senior staff focused in Ontario. Some of the staff Will, be need, will need to be brought over to Alberta with our recommendation in order to ensure integration 
and synergy. So now I've talked, I've talked a lot about yourself, about your company. Let's take a look, let's take a little bit look at a little bit of the numbers. The return on assets has gone down with oil, and what but the key takeaway I want you to, the key thing I want you to take away from this is that in order to sustain further growth and development, we need to make some investments. Asset turnover. The recent decrease has been due to the oil price drop. However, we expect that to see we expect to see that move up with the increase in pour, of oil. And lastly, the debt to equity ratio has been decreasing over time. And this has shown that you are capable of sustaining investments and to pay back those investments. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the market environment and the view that the oil will rebalance in the future. And a little bit about the effects that have taken place. So falling demand, we've seen construction, construction rentals fall by 20% in 2015 and expected to fall by 10% in 2016. Additionally, the falling demand for new equipment sales has fallen by 30% in 2015 and 6% or 5% in 2016. Now, where this really affects your organization in Alberta is the fact that these larger corporations are able to give discounts to their employees due to their economies of scale in that area whereas you are not able to, and that is contributing to the lower return on assets due to lower rentals. So, the market is cyclical, but this provides opportunity for expansion and for your organization to leverage its success in Ontario and Alberta. So, looking at the status quo, if we maintain Garamount's two current stores, we're looking at a we're looking at decreasing revenues over time due to the larger larger competitors, and we're looking at an eventual negative net income. So it's not sustainable just to maintain the two stores, which leaves two options. We can either expand or we can exit. However, exiting does not allow us to leverage our success in Ontario and to capitalize on that growth that will be taking place in Alberta when the price of oil rises. And I want to point out, point out the valuation at a seven multiple your corn, of your two Alberta stores would be approximately 10 or 11 million dollars, which is a significant amount. However, there's a lot of potential opportunity to grow with Alberta. The last thing I want to talk about with Komatsu is Komatsu is the relationship. You've developed a strong business relationship, attending regular strategic meetings to, strategic meetings to grow Komatsu as a brand and to grow your organization. Taking a look at the wants of Komatsu, they want to see their brand rise. They want to become number one. However, we also have to take into consideration what Garamount wants. Because Komatsu as number one does not benefit us if we do not succeed with it. So our, the return on equity is key for Garamount's success and any opportunity that we, we engage in. Lastly, we want to make sure that we build our brand and extend our network by expanding westward. The key takeaway <coughs> is that exiting Alberta could hurt the business relationship as Komatsu is looking to expand and will hurt us financially by exiting an opportunity for growth. Thank you, Jordan. So, given this analysis of the issues, we then went into analysis of the alternatives available. And what we start off by doing is taking a look at the decision criteria that we have for these alternatives moving forward. And we start off with financial sustainability, as mentioned before. So does Garamond prosper financially into the long term as a result of the alternative chosen? 
Secondly, in terms of growth, is there long-term term growth? Is there feasible long-term growth associated with the alternative that we choose moving forward? And lastly, timeliness. So given the cyclical market, we want to take advantage of the point that the market is at now so that in future we can reap the benefits of this. So is the decision feasible to complete in, in a, such a time period? So now we start off with our decision criteria and the alternatives. So the alternatives are available as we outlined. Purchasing a rental chain. Secondly, building our own network of rental chains. And lastly, exiting Fort McMurray. So exiting with the two stores that we currently have. So first of all, we took a look at exiting Fort McMurray. And in terms of financial stability, as Jordan has been mentioning, we didn't see this as a, as lucrative, a lucrative alternative moving forward in terms of financial sustainability, in terms of the multiple, and in terms of the benefits we could potentially reap by investing in this area. And in terms of growth of that, now this really wouldn't last to grow in the Alberta region since we'd be removing the stores that are currently there. And lastly, in terms of timeliness, so as well, this as well would not allow us to really capitalize on this period in time in the market. So the second thing we looked at was building our own network of retail stores. So in terms of financial sustainability, after our analysis, building our own network does not allow us to gain financial stability into the long term. And in terms of growth, however, this does allow us to grow within, that, within Alberta. But lastly, in terms of timeliness, building our own network would take a substantially long time to actually implement and to actually start seeing the returns on this investment. And lastly, purchasing a rental chain. Now in terms of financial stability, after analyzing the three purchase options available, which we'll go into more detail about, we found this as a lucrative financial investment for Garamond, for our organization as a whole. Secondly, in terms of growth, this really allows us to grow as an organization, positioning, positioning ourselves well to reap the benefits in this cyclical industry. And in terms of timeliness again, this really allows us to capitalize now as an organization while the market is currently at its, uh, currently in a cyclical low at the moment. So given this, this was our recommendation to you today that we move forward with purchasing one of the retail options that were provided to us as this will allow us to position ourselves well for the future of this industry. So what our recommendation looks like to you today is, first of all, engaging Caledon with the offer. So given our analysis, which we'll touch on a bit more, engaging Caledon was the best option for us moving forward out of the three options, three companies available to us. Secondly, adjusting the product mix. So we do want to maintain that relationship with Komatsu, so adjusting that re the, the product mix to ensure that Komatsu is a part of this long-term strategy. And lastly, assessing potential expansion to BC, because we recognize that there is opportunities within BC, and so from Alberta we recognize that this would be a prime thing to look into in the long term with more analysis. Thank you, Dada. Given the three phases of the recommendation that Taz suggested, we can look in depth into each phase and to see which tasks must be completed in order to make this recommendation successful for the company and to sustain the long-term growth targets. So, by engaging Caledon, we're really looking for a company that brings more than just assets, but brings also a network of clients and contracts to add to the company and help us grow. And when we looked at the three options between Transverse, Caledon, as well as Vanguard, we noticed that Caledon had the highest in terms of profit margin. And this indicates that they have a better control over fixed costs and do have a significant advantage in terms of product mix. It's a very tight margin business and any improvements in profit margin would be sus that can be sustainable will help with the company in the long run. And we also looked at the multiples of which we could bid for the two companies at. For the asking multiple, that's a six or a seven multiple, as suggested, that they would be willing to sell at. And for the bidding multiple, we would like to start bidding at a multiple of approximately five. So this leaves some room for negotiation. And 
if we are able to purchase at a lower multiple, this will also improve the ROI and ROE even further. But this will still be viable even at higher multiples. In terms of financing, we recognize that Caledon would cost approximately 100 million to finance completely. And Komatsu has made available to us a 70% loan for any acquisition costs that we're making, as long as they're added to our product mix. So we foresee 70 million coming from Komatsu uh, at 2.7%. And also for Garamond, uh, we will be approaching the parent company and suggesting this proposal to them for 32 million to make up the difference. And although this may seem a large sum for this investment to start off, it is very profitable for a long-term growth perspective. And the parent company is in a very financially viable position to be making investments at this point, since the debt to equity is at one of the lower points relative to the last few years. And the second phase involves adjusting the product mix. And as we've mentioned before, one of the key draws for Komatsu is to have more distribution channels in the Western Canada region so that they can reach more of the market share. And they can accomplish this if we are to purchase an additional chain with 15 more stores to start off already. And also this would involve some intermingling of employees. And since the chain that we'll acquire from Caledon has experienced employees in Caterpillar brand as well as JC, this will give our company the expertise to move forward and to also conduct these rentals and increase the network of clients that company has. However, we do want some intermixing since some expertise for Komatsu will be needed in order to successfully bring that product in, uh, those product lines into the mix for the Caledon chain. So we're mixing the two types of products. So we'll be swapping out the Hitachi for the Komatsu. And finally, the third phase of the implementation is the most important and key to the long-term growth for the company. And this phase involves assessing potential to enter BC. So Alberta provides a significant environment for growth because it's at a low cyclical point, and also due to some of the tax advantages that make the environment more feasible for business operations relative to BC. And also, this will give an opportunity for the management at Garamond to get in contact with more of the clients in the western coast of Canada, since Alberta's positioned closer to BC. And we're recommending more trade shows and more management involvement in the west coast, and in addition to develop these connections through the manufacturers. So since Caledon has significant agreements with JC as well as Caterpillar, this will broaden the mix and also draw more clients because the construction and the demand for this type of equipment is still strong in BC given the stability of the real estate market. In terms of risks, we've identified the three key, ri uh, the three key risks that are most important to the strategy and how to mitigate them. So when we look at the first risk, it's the difficulty of selling uh, Hitachi products. So this risk is mostly mitigated because we'll be swapping out that Hitachi with the Komatsu line and improving the product mix that way. And also, uh, given the wider variety, we'll also be able to attract more clients. And also the second key risk would be a long-term economic decline in Alberta. And moving into BC will really help mitigate that by diversifying out that market environment and giving the company a foothold in a different province. Now, these are the three key areas we felt that in order for our implementation to succeed, this is what would happen. We'd be able to achieve excellence on prosperity, connections, and in terms of technology as well. Now, just to sum this up, We've taken a look at the current market situation and we found a very lucrative opportunity for us here to invest in at this current portion, at this current time, which we will be able to reap the benefits of in the long term, which is why we recommend that you purchase Caledon 
to increase market share of Garamond construction into the foreseeable future. Thank you. Open up the floor for questions. Thank you. That concludes our presentation piece. We'll now go on to the question and answer period. Uh, great. I um, appreciate your analysis there. And uh, I just want to dig into the Caledon uh, choice there. You mentioned a bit about why you felt that that was the right one to go with. Um, it is definitely the more expensive of the options. And uh, the other thing that concerned me with that one is the, the high debt to equity ratio. So we're already taking on a, a bunch of debt with that one. And then we're looking at, from your analysis, raising another 32 million. Uh, I guess I have concerns about potentially breaking bank covenants or even the ability to, to raise that, uh, that extra money. So I'm just wondering, um, what, what are you suggesting or, or how, how are we going to handle that? So your concerns with Caledon are uh, valid, of course. However, they are still a lower debt option than uh, Vanguard. And in terms of transverse, we foresaw that their product mix did not quite fit with the outlines and the competencies of Garamond's core business, which is in equipment and construction. Uh, therefore, Caledon remained the most viable strategically. And in terms of financing, uh, the parent company is still in a very good position to finance and take on more debt. Uh, and also Komatsu's uh, re revolving line of credit frees up a lot of space for improvement there. Thank you. So you talked about uh, this as being a strategic opportunity at this particular time and that the oil market is cyclical. How long can they sustain a low um, market before it becomes financially unviable. But do you not see this as being fairly risky to take on at this time? That amount of debt. Like, are you you're thinking it's only going to last for four years? On what, like, what do you base that on? We do recognize that the there is risk involved with this decision. However, the market we've seen has fluctuated with um, in, in cycles and we do foresee that the site that we will be able to sustain the current drop in oil prices so that we can really leverage those 20 stores when the price goes increases so you can, you can mitigate it for four years what happens if it lasts for six Throughout the course of the year, there will be evaluations throughout the course. So as evaluations are done, then we will be able to now see uh, what needs to be done, where resources need to be cut back, where resources need to be added. So over the course of the time, after those, after two years, we would be able to see if it will extend to an extended period of time. We would be able to tell, and then we would, we would know what to do for it, moving forward. Can you talk about any other considerations uh, and how you arrive at BC as a potential additional option? Uh, given the economic downturn for oil and commodities, that puts economies such as Alberta and other provinces in a tire position since they're so heavily based and dependent on these. However, with BC, we see tourism and real estate values um, tied more to foreign investments in other areas which provides a better background, and we've still seen a steady demand in BC, despite the downturns we've seen with commodities. I'm just curious if we do go ahead with the purchase, and um, as we said, it, the downturn lasts longer, what effect would that have on my financial season? With, with the current drop in oil prices, and with this investment, we're, we are seeing that, well, let me, let me take action on step. With the current drop in oil prices, we're seeing our revenues fall due to the discounts available with the economies of scale of our larger competitors. By purchasing Caledon, we are able to gain in economies of scale and maintain a large amount of revenue, even though it is decreasing for everyone. So we are more financially stable 
being a larger competitor and being able to offer these discounts because we were still able to collect more revenue than in this current situation with two straws.